Hello and welcome to the fourth in our battles associated with Lincoln Castle talks. The first one was about the Battle of Lincoln in 1141. Parts one and two of the 1217 battle make up the second and third. And this is the third one, 1644. And apart from a couple of air raid wardens in World War II, this is the last time the castle was really used in battle. My name's Eric Gregg. And because this is about the English Civil War, there's me um, dressed very Civil War, but with an anorak on. So, bit of the background to the 1644 attack. Now, 1625, King Charles had become king and he didn't think he should do what Parliament said. There was big rows between the king and Parliament over who should rule. In 1642, civil war broke out. The Parliament, based in London, had control of the southeast, and the Royalists were generally in the sort of West Country and the North. So Lincoln Castle at that time, um, and there's a nice plan on the top right of what Lincoln Castle looked like. In the 1630s, Charles I had he, well, he hadn't got much money, which is one of the conflicts he had with Parliament was over raising taxes and trying to get money. So he'd sold off the ditches and embankments on the outside of the castle and houses are sort of encroached and made the castle a lot less defendable. And he'd done this to raise money. 1642, of course, the Civil War starts and the city changed hands multiple times between the parliamentarians, the, who are they? Roundheads um, and the Royalists who supported Charles. These are the Cavaliers. Um, Charles very early on in the war visits Lincoln and says to the sheriff, the jailer, get the prisoners out of the castle, refortify the castle. And castles up and down the country were refortified. But in the age of cannons and muskets, many of these castles were rather out of date and redundant, not very defendable. So Parliament gets control of the city, then the Royalists come back in 1643 and then they're seen off again. And then in 1644, the Royalists return and try and hold the castle. Now, the Earl of Manchester is a parliamentary general. He attacks the castle and captures the castle, which was under the control of the Royalist Colonel Francis Frame. On the 3rd of the May, Manchester enters the city from the south with 6,000 men of the Eastern Association. The Eastern Association were the troops of Norfolk, Suffolk and Essex and there. These uh, guys were very highly trained and the sort of crack troops of the parliamentary army. But heavy rain delayed the attack. They were slipping as they went up the slopes and it's the rain probably delayed the attack more than the Royalists. The Royalists in a letter claimed that they're a skirmish in the south part of the city where they built some barricades. They'd killed 50 Royalists, but uh, historians think this claim is extremely unlikely. 6th of May, Manchester storms the castle with his troops moving up through the city. Um, and despite the fact that when they get to the castle walls, they find their scaling ladder is a bit too short. They manage to scramble up over the walls of the medieval castle and the walls were probably not in a brilliant state at that point. 50 royalists were killed, 650 royalists taken prisoner and 2,000 muskets captured. The parliamentarians lost just eight men suggesting the earlier claim they'd lost 50 was nonsense and 40 injured. And the parliamentary troops then sacked the upper city as parliamentary troops and troops do after all battles in the past of 1217, 1141, the city was sacked and 1644. If you go around the cathedral, you'll notice that of where there should be brasses on the floor on people's tombs, the brasses have been taken up and they were taken up and melted down to make cannibals. And basically all the sort of religious statues around all the churches were probably torn down at this point. That's a lovely picture the late David Val drew of the uh, the attack on the castle. 
So, a little postscript there. There's a account of a trial of a member of the parliamentary garrison of Lincoln Castle, and he's walking along the riverbanks and he sees an ex royalist. And this royalist has got a gun because he's out hunting. Now, ex royalist soldiers under the Commonwealth, when we didn't have a king, ex royalist officers were not allowed to carry guns. So, an argument started. He goes, I recognize you, you're a royalist officer, you should not have a gun. Um, there was an argument, bullet was fired, someone died, it went to court. And the weird thing is, 1217, I know more about the ins and outs of the battle than 1644. And it's only because of this court case that's mentioned later in another book do we know that the parliamentarians had a garrison at the castle because a member of the garrison gets involved in this. There are points when the royalists going backwards and forwards with the parliamentary troops temporarily take the bishop's palace. But at this point, it does seem to be with the uh, parliamentarians in control of the country, garrison there in the castle. In 1660, the monarchy was restored. But was the castle slighted? When the monarchy wasn't there and uh, in England was a republic under the Commonwealth, a lot of castles were damaged to stop the royalists and the local aristocracy taking them over. And there has been suggestions that perhaps Lincoln Castle was slighted, perhaps the walls were reduced in height, perhaps the towers were reduced in height. But I don't think this is the case. And I'll tell you why. A couple of reasons. Firstly, you needed Act of Parliament. There's no Act of Parliament. And secondly, when castle walls are slighted, what they generally do is get a big barrel of gunpowder, put it against the walls, and blow a huge hole in the walls. This hasn't happened at Lincoln. The rumour is that they took a long a slice off all the walls, which is a very time consuming way. Now, you might notice in this picture, which is showing the side of the east gate of Lincoln Castle. Just here, there's a door. It's not a window, it's a door. And it's there to give access to hoardings. Now, in medieval times, if you thought a war was coming, they built hoardings on the top of the buildings. And they're like big sort of giant garden shed things that hang over the top, uh, out the front of the walls and with little hatches at the bottom. So you can lift the hatch up and drop stones on people. Now, this gives access to the hoardings, which is why it's going out of the castle into what is now thin air. So that is at the top where the top of the walls would have been in medieval times and it's still at the top of the walls and it's about the height of the rest of the walls suggesting that the walls weren't slighted because that's the height they would have been now i've been to a uh, chateau in france and after the french revolution they slighted lots of the um fortify fortifiable chateaus and this one they got a barrel of gunpowder blew a hole in the in one wall um, that's not happened at Lincoln. The walls still survive. It's not that defendable. The Earl of Manchester could get up, um, get his troops over the walls, even though, though their ladders were too short. So that's the last time Lincoln Castle was ever in a battle. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I've endeavoured to only use images that we either license to us copyright free or we hold the copyright to or the copyright holder has given us permission to use. If we inadvertently used an image you believe you hold the copyright to, we apologise and please contact us regarding this matter. Thank you for listening to this series of talks. I hope you've enjoyed them.